Oh, yes. Welcome back, everyone. Today, I am beyond excited to be showing you a review for the new Transformers Legacy Generation Select's Titan Class Black Zarek. You'll have to pardon the echo and change the scenery a little bit. When I review very big characters like this, I have to, you know, step outside my usual recording area and go somewhere a little more spacious. So hopefully the echo in here is not too bad. I think the lighting is pretty decent. Now for anyone that's unfamiliar with this release, it was advertised as a Generation Selects figure that's exclusive to like Hasbro Poles and online retailers. And it is a rather intricate retool of the Titan class Scorponok from Transformers Earthrise. Now we didn't know at the time that this guy would eventually be branded for Legacy, but given the fact that he's you know being released here in 2022, it actually kind of makes sense. And unlike past generation Selects toys, Legacy seems to just be embracing their Selects figures as part of the line. There's very little separation. They don't have their own, you know, barcode or anything anymore. They're just a Legacy toy, as you can see right here. Which honestly, I think is better. It gives you a better idea of where these figures are actually supposed to be in your collection. All right, so without further ado, if you've seen my reviews before, you know this goes. We're gonna take a look at Black Zarin's packaging, then we'll open it up. We'll get a look at, you know, the layout inside. We usually do that for the select style boxes. We'll look at his instructions, and then we'll see Black Zarek himself in his beast mode, base mode, and robot modes. Naturally, I'm gonna be doing plenty of group shots and comparisons today, so expect a nice thorough review. And then as always, at the end of the video, I'll give my final thoughts. So as I already said, Black Zarek is a retool of the Earthrise Scorponok toy, which, follows the character's legacy of being a retool of the original Generation 1 Scorponok, and he was meant to be a uh, revived, upgraded version of that character, who premiered in the Transformers Master Force series. And the original Generation 1 toy was the first, and until now, last time, we really got a proper transforming Black Zarek. So for me, this is beyond exciting. As someone who lives in North America and does not have easy access to the original toy, this is like a dream come true, and it is one of the most highly anticipated releases for me for the last year. All right, so our box, as you can see, is a select style box. It looks very similar to the one that the recent Lift Ticket toy came in, where it is select still, but it's got, you know, more intricate branding, got a lot more print work on it, and it has Legacy right there. You can see this really nice line art render of Black Zarek. You see, you know, his upper body, his face here. It does wrap around to the side, like so, so you can see that. Got a big Decepticon symbol there. On this side, it's more of a wrap around, but it's just like the background lines. Top of the box, Transformers Legacy. And then when we flip it down like this, you get kind of your familiar little front flap with the label here. And you can see it says Titan Class Black Zarek, that usual branding. And like I said, there is no more of that like, you know, WFC-GS, you know, number or something. They've dropped all that. They really just want to hammer home that these are legacy toys, even if they're not released in the main line. So I do really like that. Okay, I've gone and cut our label so we can open this guy up. Let's grab the flap here. So Lexar is kind of exciting because you get to have like an unboxing component to the video, which is pretty cool. All right, look at this, wow. That is really above and beyond. Look at that, they have a render of the head component. They have his Tyrant Spear here, which is a new addition to this toy. They have his name written in your ancient Autobot right here. Legacy, all these cool little lines and shapes. Get his instructions, that really nice vibrant like purple and blue from the Legacy line. We'll get a better look at those in a second. First, let's pull out the main course here. Big boy himself. Out easily. Oh, come on, buddy. Here we go. Slowly, gently working. There we go. He's coming. He's coming. He's like me. He doesn't want to get out of bed. All right. Let's set this aside for now. And here is Black Zarek in his insert. So you can see right here, you got the main body of the figure. This looks like his little back panel there in that little spot. His head is presumably this compartment. And I think it's just a spacer. Oh, it feels like there's something in there. Maybe it's, it might be his cannons in there. Um, and then the Tyrant Spear, I'm not sure where that's hiding. That might also be in here. That should account for everything. So, I mean, look how nice that looks. Very, very retro looking. They did a fantastic job of recreating the original Black Zarek toy. 
Though this time, thankfully, without you know the tendency to crumble to dust because of the gold plastic. Thankfully, we've come a long way since then. Okay, so now we can see the instructions. A little fold in the back. It's a big instruction sheet. I'll have to hold it way out here for you. So there's just kind of your front panel with the render, the name, all that stuff. Let's go ahead and open this up. All right. So this first one is just kind of getting him assembled out of the box, showing you how to put everything together. This bit right here shows you what to do with his uh, accessories. You can have these little panels like stored on his legs, but you can also uh, take them off, put them together, combine them with the little pincher thing to make his shield. And then this shows you how to assemble the Tyrant Spear, which actually comes apart in a number of pieces here, even the blade, that's interesting. So it really breaks down. All right, so this top part is how to work the head. So as you're removing his head from the main body, how to transform it into, um, I guess, Zarek still, right? That would still be his name, little Zarek guy, who's got a nice little makeover. And then removing his head to become the smaller Titan Master. Actually, I guess in, um, in Japanese continuity, the little guy was actually called Scorponok, and the big guy was Zarek. So they kind of had it backwards from how we had in the U.S. All right, then we get the main transformation from robot to beast mode. It shows you how to transform his head into the beast head and attach it. And on the back, we get storage for the little tiny, like, Titan Master, Headmaster guy inside of the scorpion. Where to put that? how to store the pieces of his spear on the scorpion mode, so that's cool. And then we get transformation from scorpion to base mode, which is always really cool looking. Weapon storage for that, which I guess they're just showing you you can attach it two different ways. Oh no, no, it's, it's both halves. So yeah, um, so the biggest differences with this guy, aside from the obvious you know, colors, is a lot of retooling to the head components and the addition of a tyrant spear. Now, if you were hoping for, you know, him maybe getting some improvements where the Scorponok toy fell short, like as far as getting his cannon or getting the extra, like, shoulder-mounted turrets, you're out of luck. They didn't go ahead and add those, which, I mean, I'm not surprised. I didn't expect them to. But I'll, I'll tell you what, if someone from Hasbro ever sees this, if you guys want to make, like, an accessory pack for these two with, like, the blaster and the shoulder cannons... I'd buy it, and I think a lot of people would buy it, like for a decent price, maybe, I'd say, you know, 20, maybe $25 for like both sets. I, I think you could sell it. I think people would happily buy like a first party upgrade kit for these. Because, I mean, right now you're leaving money on the table. I mean, third parties are doing it. Why not get in on that market? You already got the molds there for the cannons. You just gotta make the blaster piece now. It's wishful thinking, I know, but a little bit of above and beyond there would make everybody's day, I think. All right, now we get Black Zarek's Beast Mode, or Scorpion Mode, and something I just now realized, he actually lacks something that the regular Scorponok has, and that's the blast effects, the three little, you know, three-piece blast effect that combined into one that was recycled from Jetfire. Yeah, he doesn't come with that. Now, I can't say I'm terribly disappointed, because, I mean, those blast effects, they're just kind of there, and, I mean, they exist, but they're not necessary. And it seems that they've been swapped out to make room in the budget for the Tyrant Spear. Now, honestly, that just makes me wonder why they just didn't skimp on the blast effects for Scorponok and give us his actual rifle, but oh well. But you can see here that the Scorpion mode mostly looks the same. The head is obviously all new. This is where all the new tooling is right here. So it has a very different bug-like face compared to the regular Scorponok. And of course, we'll get a chance to look at that here in a moment. You also notice that there's the addition of some extra parts here, which are formed from the Tyrant Spear. So on both sides, you get these like little rods. This side has the butt of the spear on it. And then this side over here has that rest of that shaft. And then you can see that the main blade of the Tyrant Spear is actually being used to augment his stinger, which is really cool in theory. It does make it look much more impressive, uh, much more menacing. Kind of like the comparison I just did of the original Beast Wars Scorponok and this Kingdom version where one stinger looks awesome, the other one looks puny and pathetic. Now, this is a good thing in theory, except, at least on my copy, there's a bit of an issue with the final digit of the stinger here being quite loose. And you can see it really does not want to support that added weight. In fact, we can take this off 
It even kind of has a hard time supporting itself past a certain point. Once you get it past about this angle, it wants to droop down. Uh, so I got a bit of a loose stinger on my copy. I hope this isn't a universal thing. I really do. Because it looked much better, you know, with the stinger kind of pointed towards you threateningly instead of just kind of up like that. But unfortunately, my copy can't do that. So for anyone else that has this, let me know if you have that same issue. I'd love to know if this is, you know, a mold degradation issue or if I just got unlucky here. The other weird tolerance thing I have is for this part of the spear right here, it sits very loose and doesn't want to stay in at all. Plugs in this little five mil port here, which is all well and good, but your little plug right there, your five mil post, it's really short and it doesn't get a whole lot of friction. So you have to kind of depend on the friction of like this shaft rubbing against the molded details to keep it up. Because without that, it just flops down and wants to fall out. The other side doesn't really have that issue because it has a much longer post. See right there, it's like twice as long. So it plugs in a lot better, not really running the same issue on that side. So that really is a shame. Um, it's, it's always really frustrating when your toy has tolerance issues. And again, I hope it's just more mine than anything else. And luckily they're not game breaking. These are the only real tolerance issues I've found on this guy so far. And for just kind of accessory padding on the scorpion mode it's really not that big a deal to me though admittedly can be kind of frustrating uh, i imagine if i put like a little bit of like a clear nail polish or something just in here in that hole we tighten it up a good bit so there are fixes for it All right now we get to see black zarek next to his past self this is our earthrise scorpionock and you can see as far as their bodies are concerned it's the same visage just you know different colors the big difference here, as you can see, are the heads. I mean, there's so much that's changed with these. They actually don't even attach the same way. See, Scorpinox head, it's actually turned around 180 from his robot mode right now, whereas Black Xerix is in the normal position. It's just got this, like, face guard thing over the robot face to make up, like, the scorpion eyes, whereas, you know, his scorpion eyes are on the backs of the little headmaster's legs. So very, very different orientation and very different sculpting. This is where all the retooling is right here. It's pretty significant. But yeah, both these guys, they both look really cool. They're really big, dangerous looking scorpions. And they just have a presence there that really isn't felt in a lot of the other Titan alt modes, like the Metroplex and Fort Max Titans that they have. They're supposed to be awe-inspiring, right? It's a city that turns into a robot, but like their base modes are so weak. Their alt modes or ship modes, whatever you want to call them. It's just the robot like splayed out basically. Uh, this is such an improvement. Like they've really taken the engineering to another level with Scorpionock and you know Black Zarek here. Okay, this is a shot I've been wanting to do since this guy was announced. And luckily I have my trusty assistant, my mini me, to help hold this dude up. So this is Black Zarek's Dakatsu mode, or like twin-headed serpent mode, from the finale of Master Force. So I had to, you know, bust out my God Jinrai, my Grand Maximus, so he can ride on top of him and they can fight this thing. Now, this toy can't perfectly replicate it, uh, mostly because of the shoulders, because in the cartoon, his shoulders right here actually, like, kind of fold up on the top to make, a, you know, more close together and longer necks. Uh, you can't do that with this toy, so you have to settle for that. And then you also just want to remove all his accessories, except for the little shield has right here. Those are actually on the screen. And... Uh, personally, I would actually take the little collar piece off right there because it's not on the, you know, cartoon model and it comes off very easily. So yeah, if you've been wanting to recreate this and you have a strapping young son who can hold this up for you, uh, feel free to do that. Or if you actually have a, you know, figure stand that can hold this guy's weight even better. So yeah, this really cool shot. Just wanted to show that off for you guys. All right, before we move on to the base mode, I want to focus on the headmaster components. Now. The headmasters, either you know the small one or the larger one, they're not named in any of the promotional material, and I don't think I don't think they even like got an actual name call out in like the original Master Force anime or toy line or anything. Now we do know that the original form of this guy, Scorpionok, he had kind of a name switch in Japan where the small headmaster component was called Scorpionok, and then the very large transtector body with like the completed head was called Mega Zarek. So it's probably safe to say that the smaller components are officially called Scorpionok. 
Now, you know, the original toy, there was just one headmaster. He wasn't a double headmaster like this toy. You know, the downside of that is that he had a really, really tiny little face inside that helmet. So I think the double headmaster route was absolutely the way to go. I mean, it worked for Fort Max, works very well for the Scorponok family too. So our smallest component just looks like a little mini version of Zarek or, you know, Scorpion, whatever you want to call him. I'll try to get my camera to focus on as much as possible. For some reason, my camera really has a hard time focusing on things that are very close up. Uh, but you can see that he's got a you know gold body with black limbs, and he has a painted metallic purple face with little red eyes. So the paintwork on this guy is quite nice. There's the head component. We'll get a better look at that here when we transform him. And you know he's not super intricate. But he is nice looking. The, the painted face and all that are a really good touch, I think. Now my thing doesn't want to focus on him at all. Come on, guys. There we go. Focus. All right. So here is the original Zarek from Earthrise to compare him. And the biggest difference between these, aside from the obvious choice of colors, is the fact that the regular Zarek, he doesn't have a painted face. Just the eyes are red. So that is one kind of key difference that makes this guy feel a little bit more premium. All right, I actually am going to cover the transformation to get to our large headmaster mode, just because it is a little bit different than the regular Zarek. So we'll kind of take our little headmaster guy, and you just fold him up like any other Titan Master style figure. Boom, head. So now for this one, you want to untab the feet from this chest plate. I'm going to break loose right there. Go like that. Then you want to lift these up at the shoulder joints, like so. Bring the legs the rest of the way down. Kind of tight, but they'll go. Flip that chest down and straighten out his arms, right? Flip out the fists, all that. Make sure that these little panels here, they're facing like this in the head mode. Rotate them to where they're pointing down, I guess becoming some kind of blaster or something maybe. All right. There's the body, get it all posed up. Looking pretty good. And then lastly, plug in the head. All right. So this is our Black Zarek Headmaster. Now one thing that is unfortunately different about this guy compared to his standard release is that these little horn pieces, while they are detachable, they do come off, there's nowhere to store them this time around. Because of all that fancy remolding, there aren't little slots or anything to just kind of peg them on the back so they're out of the way. So he is kind of stuck with them just hanging off his arm shields, which I guess you can see them being like some kind of claw weapons or something. Uh, you can remove them and just leave them off if you want to, but then you don't have any kind of storage. All right, so the key differences here as far as like the inner robot, he has the same chest design, but they've gone and retooled to have these big gashes right in the middle. And it's way more than just superficial. Like it's like this deep, deep cut. They got all this molded tech details behind it. It's painted red, which I don't know how they did that. Is it like layered plastic? Yeah, okay, so I think this is a separate piece that gets pressed in there. That's what it looks like, because otherwise it'd be hard to paint that red without getting it all over the edges and stuff. So it looks really nice. Now I don't know what the inspiration for those gashes on his chest are exactly. Um, maybe they just thought it looked cool. On his head though, you see he has an eye patch. Now this, I actually do get the reference. This is referencing uh, Black Zarek's appearance in the uh, Transformers Zone OVA that was exclusive to Japan and very, very short-lived. That was just promoting the uh, you know Zone portion of the G1 toy line that had like Die Atlas and all that. They brought back a lot of Decepticon, like Titans and Combiners and stuff. And they gave them these really outlandish get-ups with like capes and pauldrons, and in his case, an eye, uh, eye patch, made him look like a pirate. Uh, so this is a nod to that. And it kind of works, because again, we never did see the Headmaster component in fiction, so it can just kind of be whatever you want it to be. So pretty, pretty neat little nod there. I think it's a change, like, it wasn't necessary. Like, they didn't have to change it, right? There was no remolding of the robot on the old toy. But they did it, and I gotta applaud them for it because it's you know just some extra effort there that makes this guy stand out more and just makes him that much cooler. And of course, our look at him is not complete. That bringing in Zarek again, so you can see the two side by side. 
had to lower the exposure there for a second so you could actually see Zarek's details. So you can see, you know, as far as the Botmo components, mostly the same. New chest here and new little face sculpt with the eye patch. And then of course everything on the outside, like the outer shell is all different too. Like these outer leg panels are completely different from each other. All this back kibble and stuff. Here's that, you know, horn storage I showed you. These little blast shield things, all very, very different. And this is where all that retooling budget went with, you know, these guys, which is a good thing. I mean, it is accurate to how it's supposed to look because, you know, the old Black Zarek toy was mostly just a black and gold Scorponok with a new head. So that's what we get here. And because the new Headmaster is far more intricate than the original toy, it took a lot of work. So I really do applaud them for putting in that effort to make this guy look just absolutely phenomenal. Okay, now we get to see Black Zarek's base mode. And this thing is really, really cool. As much as I love the Scorpion mode, the base mode is equally as impressive. And just like with that Scorpion mode, way, way better than the base modes of like any of the Titans that came before him. Like even Trypticon, who I think is a step above like the Fort Max and Metroplex, his base mode is just nothing compared to this. This thing is wicked looking. It looks like an evil headquarters. And now, because of the addition of the Tyrant Spear, you get these big spiked, like, spire things going on on the side. Which is really cool how modular that Tyrant Spear is. As you can see, you have, like, two, like, pointed ends here. You manage to kind of mix and match the different pieces, because there's, like, four different pointy pieces all together that can be swapped around. And you can essentially just give him, like, two short spears in, you know, that robot mode if you want to. So I think that's really cool how that works out. This mode's also really cool because it gives you your first look at all this like really nice teal that's making an appearance here. It's teal paint. You got a lot of bright red paint, a lot of purple, a lot of silver here. It even has, you can almost like barely see it, but these little tech details on the insides of the legs, and it is on both sides, is painted this like dark gunmetal color, whereas they're left unpainted on Scorponok. So it's an easily missed detail, but it's a really nice one because that little bit of two-tone in there makes him look um, you know, less flat, makes them look more, I guess, realistic. Yeah, this thing is really cool. Of course, right now, it's a little desolate. So let's go ahead and put our little Zarek, or Scorponok Headmaster here to lord over the place. But, you know, who's he gonna lord over? Who's he in charge of? Well, I think you guys know where this is going. We also have our Black Rorichi, which was a uh, War for Cybertron Generation Selects toy. It's a mostly gold and purple recolor of the Fast Track toy, and, you know, is meant to be the little drone partner that came with the original Black Zarek toy. Now, you can see the golds do not match up, like, at all. This new Black Zarek has this very, you know, kind of bright and, like, very pleasing shade of gold. The gold used here, which is much dingier looking, is actually a lot closer to the original coloration on the old toys, which, you know, that plastic was infamous for the gold plastic syndrome. So this does get a lot closer in hue to that, which hopefully doesn't mean it's gonna break down the road. I, I think they're just replicating that color rather than using the same plastic, at least I hope. Um, so he does clash a little bit, plus his purples are like a little more muted, or not muted so much, they're, I guess they got more of like a reddish tint to him than the more just standard purple here. Other than that though, I mean, he's a close enough fit. He matches about as well as Fast Track does to Scorponok. Uh, but just having him here to be able to, you know, cruise around and go on the different ramps and stuff is a real treat for anyone that really wants to complete the set. Now, hopefully, if you're planning on getting Black Zarek, you did go ahead and uh, pick up Black Barichi, you know, when he was available, because he came out a while ago now. He came out during Earthrise. Uh, so, hopefully you guys picked him up, because if not, he might be kind of difficult to find now. And he came out a while ago, and I'm sure once Black Zarek got announced, People were scooping up whatever was left of the uh, Rorichi, so just hopefully you can complete the set. That's all I gotta say. <laughs> um, and if I had to guess the reason for like the big color mismatch between them, I don't think they knew for sure, at least, that they were gonna do a Black Zarek when Rorichi came out. Rorichi was just an easy recolor, fast track, like the mold was there. They typically use everything at least twice. So they're still like, okay, cool, let's make this guy. And then later they're like, well, you know what? People really want Black Zarek, let's do him. Um, so, unfortunately, that led to them having, you know, pretty different shades of color. Again, doesn't bother me too much. I'm just more happy that we have the two of them together, finally, because here, right here, we get the whole set. 
right now we have Scorpinox base mode again for comparison. And you can see I've gone and linked them up at their airlock ramps right here because the whole uh, airlock MicroMaster base thing was a big gimmick of Earthrise. So naturally these two both support that. Uh, I'm still very disappointed that there are no uh, Prime Wars style connectors anywhere on either of these guys. Um, you know, Omega Supreme set a pretty high bar because he had not only the airlock connections, which were kind of a hint at what was coming in the next toy line because, you know, he was Siege, uh, but he also had the connector points that you could attach the Titans Return based stuff to him as well. Uh, Scorpionok had no such thing, which really stinks because if you're just trying to create like a Decepticon only base, it doesn't have a way of actually connecting to, you know, any of the older stuff. So, big, big letdown that they didn't engineer that in there somewhere. Like, even like maybe right here, right, on these panels, just little notches, something would have been awesome. They didn't do it. It's disappointing, but I'm not going to, you know, harp on it too much because it's already, you know, a done deal. I wasn't expecting them to add that in. It'd be amazing if they had just a little bit of mold tweak there just to have that compatibility, but sadly, no dice. Uh, we can see these two look really cool together, both very intimidating looking bases. One thing I think is great about them is that their paint masks are, you know, mostly different here. You see how like certain details are either painted one color or not painted at all, and they switch it up over there. Like you see all these panels, you got these little, you know, kind of pointy bits here, and then you have this like, anchor shape painted over there. It's really cool that they mix and match it and they're not just straight palette swaps of each other. It makes it feel like it's a much more satisfying buy. And you can see again, you got you know, your two Headmaster guys, you know, up top, just kind of watching over their base. You got your little fast track or Arichi drones there. And if you're one of the army builder types, you may have bought, you know, multiples of these drones so you can have them kind of driving all over the place. That's what the, the cartoon showed anyway, Master Force. They had like a whole army of them. The overall, very satisfying, and it really does help flesh out your Decepticon base. Uh, it's already an issue that it can't connect to the older stuff. But also the Decepticons, they weren't really all that well represented in War for Cybertron when it came to the base building thing. The Autobots definitely outnumbered them there. So yeah, it's a good way to help you know build that up and make it look a little more substantial than it was previously. Okay, before I get to the robot mode proper, I wanna show you guys the head transformation real quick. So first thing I wanna do is get him back to the same configuration you had him in for that Scorpion mode, everything's all folded up. And now you don't technically have to do this, but canonically you want to go ahead and put the small head on here if it's not already. And then you take this piece right here, this panel, you lift it up and you want to swing this little gold guard inward and get it, work it to where it's like over the brow ridge and it'll kind of plug into the brow ridge like that and help form it. There you go, that's the head. Uh, another small detail for accuracy's sake, you wanna make sure that you have the uh, little antennae on the right sides. And the way to tell is that you can see that the little horn or antenna, whatever you call it, it's offset. It's not directly like on the, you know, in the middle of the circle. You want it, you know, toward the back here. So when you're looking at them, they're a little bit further back. That's the technically right way to do it. Of course, you know, it's your toy, you can do whatever you want, but that's how it should look right there. So I just wanted to cover that because it's, you know, quite a bit different than the standard head and it's a little bit harder to do working that, you know, panel up in there. It's actually even harder to get back out. So yeah, there's that. Now we finally come to Black Xerix robot mode and man, is this thing just gorgeous. I mean, the Scorpionok toy was already fantastic mold-wise. In fact, I think it, you know, up to this point has been my favorite Titan. Like some of the other Titans are great, but you can definitely see that, you know, things have come a long way since we started out with Metroplex and they've become, you know, much more intricate, much better engineered, less hollow. And I think the Scorpionok toy really just embodied like the peak of what Titans can be. The Ark, while cool, I felt was like a little bit disappointing. And then Omega is probably like right behind, you know, Scorpionok for me. Until now, because I think officially I like Black Zarek more. One, because I'm a sucker for black and gold color schemes. Like, you just slap black and gold on anything and like, you've got me hooked. But also the fact that he does actually come with that Titan Spear, which is, you know, not an insignificant accessory. 
and then the remolded head, which, you know, that's really a matter of preference, but I, I think there's a lot of effort put into it. It's really great looking. I mean, he just has this whole really, really nice, like, samurai motif to him between the colors and the helmet and the fact that he's got that spear. Like, yeah. So, talking about the robot mode itself, all the tolerance on this thing still feel absolutely great. All the ratchets, you know, work like they're supposed to. Everything's nice and tight. There is one odd exception, though. Unlike Scorponok, his waist, at least in my copy, has no ratchet at all. Normally it should be ratcheted, here it just turns. It's on a friction joint. Now it's, I mean, it's sturdy. You're not gonna have to worry about this guy flopping around. There's a lot of friction there. But they did remove the ratchet in there. Either that or mine's just defective and doesn't work. Uh, it's a really interesting change. I don't know if that was done for cost cutting reasons or what. It doesn't hurt the toy at all because it, like I said, it's not a loose rotation. It honestly makes the transformation a little bit easier because you don't have nearly as much resistance when you gotta like spin his waist around 180. All right, now you can see here that he's not currently wielding any weapons. He's got everything, you know, kind of stored right now as far as his normal stuff. So he's got the shield halves on the legs, which do look really nice, give him some nice accents. And then he has the top of the shield with a little mandible bit right here on his back. So that's all well and good if you want something nice and compact and you, you know, don't want him holding his weapons or a shield, but, you know, that's not how we do here. We gotta spruce him up. So this, you just unplug from the back. Little shield sides, pop these panels. And they're attached with four little posts, so they may kind of fight you coming off. So just try to kind of gently wriggle them off without pulling the panel open, like this. Now, one thing that's really worth pointing out these pieces, unlike Scorpinox, are painted, like almost fully painted. The only thing that's not is the little pegs here. Everything else is like doused in gold paint. And that creates a little bit of an issue when you have to push these together and you got these like tabs that mesh into each other. For one, because of the paint, it's a much tighter fit, right? It's just gonna be that much slightly bigger than an unpainted piece of plastic. So the fit's tight. And also there's a lot of rubbing and I don't know how well you can see it, but I've already started losing a little bit of paint on this tab here. You can see the black showing through. And honestly, I think it's just unavoidable. There's no way that you're gonna be able to like separate this thing, put it back together without losing paint. Like I, that happened like the first time I did it. So yeah, um, just be aware you're gonna have some scratching there. And it's also gonna be a little bit harder to put together and significantly harder to take apart than the regular version. But you go ahead and just pop everything together like you do, and it'll go. There you go, like I said, tight. All right, and then you just take this piece, go ahead and plug it in like that. Now the shades of gold don't exactly match because the painted gold is lighter and much shinier than the gold plastic, but it's still pretty nice looking. Kind of gives an interesting little two-tone effect. All right, and then you could just attach it technically to either forearm, but you're supposed to put it on this one. Use these pegs and these holes here right on that forearm. Push it down all the way. Put it on that back. There we go. All right. There it is. So he's got his trusty shield. So as of right now, he's pretty much got the same loadout as Scorpion. But of course, this wouldn't be as awesome a figure if he didn't come with his Titan Spear. Look at the size of this fully assembled thing. It's huge. <laughs> it is no slouch at all. So, I'm gonna wield this. I'm gonna put it in his hand. Now, unfortunately, there's no like five mil ports or anything to plug this into to make it like really, really firmly stay in. However, he's got these serrated claws and they do dig into like these little grooves on the inside of this. It will hold it pretty firmly in just about like any pose, should be fine as far as getting this to like stay in place. I don't think you'll have a lot of issues getting that. Now you start moving it around and stuff, you know, his grip loosens, yeah, it'll probably flop around and fall out. So just be aware it's not locked in there like, you know, you might hope it would be. But I think that's really more of a product of the Scorpionok and Black Zara claws just really not being molded to hold things per se, other than just purely through like friction. So yeah, seeing him fully armed like this, Again, really just looks like some sort of like samurai or something. It's just so cool looking. I love the Black Zarek look.
Here's a quick little shot of Black Zarek holding his little partner, Black Orichi. Just so you can see the two together in their robot modes and just get an idea of just how massive Zarek is compared to his little drone. Now, most of you watching probably already know this, but for those that don't, uh, Fast Track and then this recolor of him, Black Orichi, are weaponizers and were engineered to actually have a Titan Spear mode of their own. And my guess was that, you know, that whole idea came about well before they decided they were actually going to make a Black Zarek with his own spear. So it exists, and it's an option you have, but uh, <laughs> it really pales in comparison to the real thing. However, for the sake of completion, I'm sure some people want to see what that looks like. So we're going to take our little Rorichi here, and through the magic of photo editing, I have already transformed him to a spear mode. So you can see, it's, I mean, not great looking. <laughs> it's just like tank parts, basically. And it's really small compared to the official one, but the worst thing is that it's not really well built. It's got this floppy handle thing going on because the arms make up the handle, and the friction in those elbows is just not enough for all this weight. But, still wanna show it off so everyone can see it. So I'm just go ahead. Let's get hand up here. And it's gonna go in really the same way as the other one, just through a little bit of friction holding it in there. That's about it. So let's just try to get it to line up okay. It's not even worth fighting with. Yeah, um, there it is. That is, that's the spear. The limp, floppy, terrible, terrible thing. I, I don't know who thought this was a good idea, because it's not satisfying at all. But it exists, it's an option. Uh, if you really want to have Zarek, you know, dual wielding spears, you can. One of them will just be a sad, sad piece of garbage. Right now, for our Scorponok robot comparison, just so you can see, you know, how these guys differ as far as their plastic colors, paint operations, and then, you know, the small little bit of part change out. So as I said, in their other modes, you know, there's a lot of paint apps that differ between these two. You can see like here, he's got paint apps right here in the center, whereas he's got them on the sides. These are different, the shins are a bit different, like everything's just like a little bit different. In some places he gets more, some places he gets more. And that's great. I really think that helps with the variety so you're not just buying a palette swap toy. And then when you add in the completely reworked head here, I mean, these guys, you know, they feel more than significantly different. And really makes me very happy that I own both of them. And then, of course, this guy I'm especially happy about because he actually has a weapon instead of just having a shield. I mean, yeah, the shield's got like a claw on it. I don't really know if really this. This is, this is what people are scared of right here, claw shield. No. But a giant multi-pronged spear, that's pretty scary. So yeah, I absolutely love both of these. And I do very much love the retro, like late 80s feel of Scorponok. Now, he really, really represents his time frame. It was kind of, you know, toy companies dipping their toes in the water of what would become just the eye-searing neon 90s toys in a few years. Uh, Black Zarek, he's a bit more toned down, right? Black's just a very dark color. Even his golds are you know, not obnoxiously bright. They kind of, kind of have a little bit of a weathery look to them. Um, he just kind of represents a different design philosophy, and I think they're both brilliant at what they do. Scorponok's got a very techno-looking head. It's very, very robotic. Black Zarek's a little more organic looking. He looks you know, like he's wearing some sort of a samurai mask or something. Both of them absolutely amazing. However, I do feel that Zarek with his spear is the better value between the two. And I've mentioned before, Scorponok has the blast effects. In fact, here they are for anyone wondering, like this clearly does not equal that. Big old spear that breaks down into multiple, multiple pieces. Uh, I mean, it's just amazing. And it really has me convinced they totally could have given Scorponok his cannon and just left those blast effects off. Because obviously it's within the budget to do something like this. Because they're, I mean, they cost pretty much the same amount. 
I, I think Zarek might have been a little more expensive, but that's because of, you know, recent price hikes. So he may have been $10 more, depending on where you got him. But yeah, they're more or less equivalent value. So yeah, um, I think Zarek's definitely the better deal. And I do personally like him a little bit more, but they both very much occupy a place in my heart. I mean, Scorponok is the OG. You can't really bash him at all. He's the one that kind of popularized this whole look that many Scorpion-based Transformers, many of them named Scorponok, would emulate, like, almost every single time they come up. All right, another group shot I really wanted to do is Black Zarek, along with his, you know, Titan-sized nemesis, Grand Maximus, just kind of staring each other down, ready for battle. Now, I don't think these two have ever really faced off, like, one-on-one -on -one in fiction. Like, their, their build is rivals, very much in the same vein as Scorponok and Fortress Maximus being rivals. They're just kind of like the next generation of that rivalry. I mean, technically Black Zarek's Scorponok is reborn. And then Grand is Fortress's younger brother, according to the you know, cartoon. Um, I don't think they ever really got their actual showdown, though. He kind of fought Zarek, like, vicariously through God Jinrai there, but... Yeah, it is really cool seeing them together. They make for a really, you know, nice pair of rivals. Though, I will say, you can see, you know, kind of the age difference between these toys. You notice how, you know, Grand Max, he's just kind of standing there very robotically. He doesn't have the ankle tilt, any of that cool stuff that we expect in our toys now. So, as cool as it is, I wouldn't mind, like, a little bit of a revisit to this design to give us something that just works a little better with modern Titans. However, there's a big however... Grand Max and his moldmate Fortress Maximus, they're known for being the tallest Transformers. Well, aside from Unicron. Uh, tallest aside from him. Like, Fort Max is supposed to be big. Uh, with the way things are going, where the Titans are a little bit more compact and, you know, more poseable, I don't know how they can, you know, make this guy and still keep his height where it should be. Because right now, they're pretty much, you know, perfect height against one another. I don't know how they could do that, you know, and avoid the hollowness and still have the same part count and all that. It just, it seems like it would be a much more expensive figure now. Even if they just took this design and just like added ankle tilt or something, and you know, maybe spruced up a couple other things, uh, you're probably looking at at least a $200 figure at that point. So I kind of want to see it, but also maybe I don't, because <laughs> I don't know how much that would cost. I don't know. Maybe we should just you know, stop feeling the need to update everything constantly and just be kind of satisfied with what we had at the time and just move on to bigger and better things because otherwise we can just keep redoing Fort Max and Grand Max until, you know, we're all old and gray. All right, for my final shot, this is another one that I've wanted to, you know, do since I heard this guy was coming. We get our Master Force Decepticon Army. Or most of them, anyway. Sadly, not all of those characters have received modern updates. So, of course, we get Black Zarek commanding the whole army. We also get kind of your other kind of sort of leader, Overlord. The massive Seacon combiner, God Neptune. We also get the enigmatic Double Dealer, or Double Clatter in Japan. We get the Buster and Hydra duo, being represented here by their North American counterparts, Dreadwind and Darkwing. We do get one of the Headmaster Juniors in the form of Fangry. We have Black Ricci again, as well as Fast Tracks standing in as one of the many Guardminder drones that are really just repurposed Fast Tracks. We get Cindersaur here. And then lastly, the three Decepticon Pretenders. Now, not all of these guys are great renditions of the classic characters, specifically like the Pretenders and Cindersaur. They don't look too much like their old G1 selves. And like I said, we still have some that are just missing entirely, like Browning. Probably never getting a Browning toy. So... It's still a pretty, pretty good lot, and makes for a really awesome display. Technically, the other Headmaster Juniors have had toys, but they only came in the form of just, like, little Titan Master dudes with junky little vehicles that don't look anything like their Transtector, so I didn't include those. They're not even close. Hopefully, now that we have Fangry, we might get those guys here, you know, coming kind of soon. Seeing the Dreadwing pair over here also reminds me that, sadly, they never took the easy route of just, like, recoloring these guys right here with a little bit of red and releasing them as Buster and Hydra, thereby like allowing you to complete your Starscream combiner. Would have been nice. I mean, you think easy money right there, right? Mild repaints, 
They'd make for some nice symmetrical limbs. They'd look good, you know, combined with Starscream. Never happened. I really thought that was going to be like an early selects thing, and it just never came to be. It just killed me. The rest of these guys are all quite good. The Fangory, I'm pleasantly surprised with how he came out being a retool. Overlord, of course, is doing his own thing, and, you know, he's a little small compared to, you know, what you'd expect, but he's a pretty faithful representation. The God Neptune Combiner is just awesome. I mean, I've spent a lot of time reviewing, you know, each one of his components and then the whole thing. Really stellar work there. So, yeah, I mean, all these just really come together to create this great, great picture of just, you know, the flavor and attitude of Master Force. You know, they were kind of your, your odd one outs, you know? They took a lot of the late G1 characters that never made it into the original cartoon or anything, gave them their time to shine, especially old King Poseidon over here. You know, and it really was their way of just kind of ticking those last boxes. Like, Headmasters kind of started it, you know, releasing those, those late G1 characters. And then this show kind of finished it off. And then after this, when we got to Victory, it was mostly new stuff. It was stuff made now for Victory. So this is a really nice little glimpse at the past and just seeing how they repurposed, you know, the North American characters, gave most of them different names, and made a whole new story out of it. And interestingly, Black Zarek was one of the few characters that really had much work done at all as far as a new toy. I mean, it was a retool, but at least he had a new head. Pretty much all these guys except, you know, say Overlord were really just Hasbro toys with some slight tweaks here and there. Okay. I think it's enough of the history lesson. Sorry, I'm just kind of geeking out having all these guys here together. Uh, so, yeah, I think you guys have a pretty good idea how I feel about this guy. I think he's absolutely phenomenal. I um, think I'm gonna go ahead and say my favorite Titan ever, or favorite Titan so far. Uh, he just, he already comes from a great, great mold, which is already up there as far as my favorites, and then just dials the cool factor up to 11, and it just looks so good. He gets that awesome spear. I mean, look at the tech detailing on that thing. It wasn't just like some flat, junky piece of plastic. It's got some heft to it. It's nice. And the way it breaks up and you can kind of swap the parts around and make your own, really, really just adds to it. I am still disappointed that he's missing, you know, a pair of shoulder cannons, and he doesn't have the big, you know, handheld blaster. But I wasn't expecting it. I mean not without a serious price hike to this toy. And I still, though I don't think it would happen because it probably doesn't make too much business sense, would still very much welcome like official upgrade kits for him and Scorponok. And like, it would be really simple, just an extra pair of these right here and his blaster. You could sell it for, you know, 20 bucks, 25 bucks, something. I think a lot of people would absolutely eat that up. Maybe a lot cheaper than going the third party route. So yeah. Uh, phenomenal, phenomenal toy. Looks awesome in all three modes. Has great compatibility with other figures. Sadly, not with Prime Wars, but you know, what can you do? And he'll just look awesome on anybody's shelf. Plus, I mean, again, this guy, Black Eric's a holy grail. He's one of those figures, I don't know if we ever thought we were gonna get like a proper update of. There's been those like non-transforming figures that I think are like officially licensed third-party stuff. And there's been some homages over the years, like your Dark Scorpion from Energon, but as far as actually getting Black Zarek, I wasn't sure this was ever going to happen, so I, I'm just elated to finally own this thing, and I think you guys will be too. So if you haven't picked him up yet, and he is just now starting to release, I think he is still up for pre-order on Pulse. I don't know if it's sold out. I would check. Uh, honestly, BBTS probably still has him in stock as of recording this, and they really don't mark up their price on the Titans at all, so you're getting them for retail plus like four bucks in shipping. I highly recommend it. In fact, interestingly, I think most, if not all, of my Titans have come from Big Bad Toy Store because they always seem to be the ones to get those in first. They're not always first to everything, but they seem to be really good about being like the first place, like here stateside, like, you know, not imported, able to get a hold of these big Titan figures. So they're pretty reliable for that. And no, they're not paying me, I'm just being honest, like, I do like them overall. So yeah, uh, I very much recommend, if you have the money, obviously, you know, 160, 170 bucks is nothing to sneeze at, but if you got it and you want something cool, you will not be disappointed with this. One of the best figures I've ever had the pleasure of reviewing, so go out there and grab them. Of course, this is always just my opinion on matters, so now I want to know what you all think of Black Zarek. Is he this phenomenal toy that I make him out to be? 
Do you think he's, you know, close to perfection like I do? Or are you more critical of the toy? Is there something about him you don't like? Or are you just not interested? I know a lot of people are like, ah, oh, he's cool, but, you know, he's not my G1. He's Japanese G1. Some people have that attitude. And if so, I'd love to hear about it. Any and all feedback is always welcome in that comment section. If you enjoyed this review, make sure to toss it a like. Let YouTube know you want to see more stuff like this. If you do want to see more like this, make sure to subscribe and hit that notification bell so you always get a heads up when I post something new. And thank you for joining me for this really just delightful look at the new Transformers Legacy Generation Selects Titan Class Black Zarek. And with all that said, I will see you next time.